Hi, this is Lainey Cameron, and I am so excited to be here today with Barbara O'Neill. Hi, Barbara. Hi, I'm glad to be here. And Barbara is, she's got so many bestseller titles, I had to actually write them down. Let me get this right. Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Amazon number one bestselling author. And you just celebrated a million books through Amazon Publishing and a million copies of When We Believed in Mermaids. That is insane. It's insane. It's crazy, insane, and crazy wonderful. Congratulations. I know so Thank many fans. Like, I think of all the women's fiction authors, you're like the number one person when I ask people like, so whose books do you love? You come up all the time. So That is such a nice thing to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, so where are you joining us from, Barbara? I am in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Cool. It's kind of fun. You get to find out where everybody's homes are because we're all kind of stuck in place right now. We are stuck in place. Right now we have tons of fires, so everything is sort of grim outside, but Ooh. it's usually quite beautiful at this time of year. So today we're going to talk about the latest one, which you can see in the bottom of the screen there, The Lost Girls of Devon. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind this one. The inspiration for this was a trip I took to Devon with my partner who has a sister and a brother who live at opposite ends of the West Country. And we just toured and it was so beautiful. And there were so many things that I fell in love with that I really just wanted to write a book about it. And I'm really interested in all the things that are happening to young girls at the moment. So like what kind of dangers they face, what kinds of things are different for them. Um, in comparison to the things that we faced in our generation and like how is that changing? How is it evolving? Is it better? Is it worse? That was an interesting question to explore. Oh, interesting. And it's got a little bit of a mystery element to it on that level as well, right? It does. It does. So let's take a quick peek at the reviews that this is getting because they are pretty dang fabulous. Surprise, surprise. Um, this is just one review that I pulled from Maddie Dawson, fellow author of A Happy Catastrophe. And I thought I tried to pull a review that grasps what other people are saying about the book. And I loved this. Grabs you at the beginning with its imagery and rich language and won't let go. And she, she comments that like all of your books, it's got this lovely sense of you fall into a world. And it's actually what I said in my own, own review that you are amazing with all the senses. You're one of my favorite authors that I feel like I'm in your world. The senses, the smells, the colors, you do such an amazing job of painting the imagery of, I just feel immersed when I read your books. It's one of my favorite Thank things. You. I mean, I work really hard on that part. I think setting really is a character. And I think that that's one of the things that especially right now we want, we want to escape somewhere. And so let's go to New Zealand in the, um, in the mermaids or let's go to Devon in this book and just escape to someplace new since we can't actually physically go anywhere. That makes perfect sense. So let's talk a little bit about, about this book before we move to talking about inspiration in general. Um, anything readers of the latest one here might have missed or anything that changed along the way? There actually, this one was a pretty straightforward expression of what I saw in Devon. So there were not a lot of secrets. I think one of the things that's really fun is that my sister-in-law is a little bit of an old world baby in Glastonbury. It was just wonderful to um, see the world through her eyes. And a little bit of poppy came from her, I think. And let's talk about uh, inspiration in general. Uh, you've had so many bestsellers. Like, I think we all want to know, you know, I'm a debut author. I'm at the beginning of my career here. Like, how do you keep the inspiration going? Where do you find all these ideas? I think really it's just continuing to create that mindset that you are always creating new books. Like I need to have a lot of brewing time and probably a year is about, about right for the brewing time. So I need to have a lot of ideas on the back of the step. So I'm always reading history and geography and like exploring strange movies on Netflix and just trying to like keep my mind open. I never know when something will catch me. And my husband has started doing, um, he just sends me strange articles. He just sent me one about a, a woman who actually ran away to the circus. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He's like, I know you like to um, to collect strange characters. So, you know, it's, a, it's just keeping your mind open to those prompts all the time. That's, a, that's great advice. Just, just always be on the lookout for new, quirky, interesting things. Um, right. So what other advice for authors who are earlier in their career who are trying to learn from someone like you? Like, like, what have you learned along the way that you might want to share? 
I think the most important thing that I would tell anyone starting out or in the early stages of their career is try to be as true as you can to your own voice. Like it is sometimes hard for us to know what that is, but when people comment on things over and over again, like people comment on my settings, that's part of my voice, that's part of what I do. Collect those ideas and keep working with that and try not to be tempted by the shiny new thing in the corner and keep writing your own stuff because that's how we really connect with our own reader is by being as true as we possibly can to that voice. And is there, I didn't tell you about this question, but anything new that you've got coming up? I know you've always got new things on the back burner. Anything you can tell us about the future? I do. I just turned in the new manuscript for my next book, uh, which has a wonderful title I'm not going to reveal just yet, but it's set on the Upper West Side, which I really had so much fun escaping into that world. Um, two sisters who are really at odds and uh, their aunt who has used to be um, a stewardess for TWA and a little crime that she has to figure out now. <laughs> Oh, that sounds fascinating. It sounds great. Yeah, it was and, um, I have asked you that, that we've got viewers here who love to hear from new authors, or in your case, probably an author many people know already. Um, anything I haven't asked that you want to bring up? I can't really think of anything. I just think that we should all be reading lots and lots of books right now to keep our spirits up and trust that everything's going to get better sometime. There you go. And I would encourage folks, I gave the Lost Girls of Devon a five-star review. I was lucky enough to get an early copy myself. And it's amazing. It's an escapist book. You're in the south of England. It's while we can't all escape right now, I love books that help me go to a place and feel like I'm not stuck inside my house. And your book that did that for me while I was stuck inside my house. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Lainey. And let's talk about, let's show how people, how they can connect with you. Um, I know you love to connect with readers. I do. And they can connect with you both on Facebook, facebook.com slash Barbara Samuel O'Neill or on Instagram, Barbara O'Neill author. And you've got a newsletter. People can uh, sign up and follow you on your website as well, barbaraoneill.com. Absolutely. Thank you. And thanks for spending time with me today. It was so fun that you agreed to do this. All right. Thanks a lot.